Hey guys, Brian from Snowwalker Bushcraft, and today we're going to start <coughs> gates and trails in the art of tracking. This is the meat and potatoes of tracking. This is where you start to really understand what an animal is doing as it's going through a particular area and as you're following a particular trail. <coughs> we're going to go over a few terms today. Again, uh, things that you can look up you know, uh, later on, I'll give you the basic um, version of the terms or the basic definition of terms, and then you can just take it a little bit further because uh, I want to roll right along with this. <clears throat> we have to think about understanding the mechanics of the way animals move and the coordinated muscle movements that they have, which allows them to perform many gates. Humans, like ourselves, uh, we're at a disadvantage. We're bipedal and we can only do three things. We can do, we can walk, we can run, and we can hop. That's it. That's all a human being can do. Right? You can do different variations of those, but it's still going to be one of those three things. And that's it. That's all we can do. But now if you think about if you're a mammal, and you're a quadruped, what can you do? Well, you can walk, you can trot, you can lope, you can gallop, you can bound, and you can do what's known as a prunk or a stot. It's also known as a stot. So, being quadriplegic, <laughs> being a quadriplegic, being quadrupedal does have its advantages. And when we start to look at the muscular coordinated movement of the animals, you'll have a better understanding of that. We're going to talk about the rules of speed and how it governs the trail and the gait that a particular animal is doing. You'll be able to look at a trail, follow it, and see how quickly an animal can change its gait. You'll be able to judge which way the animal is going you'll be able to understand that an animal when it turns okay all the turns and the movements are started by the front feet okay so any change of direction from the animal comes from the front feet not the hind feet uh, now <clears throat> let's talk about two terms um, that you should know you don't have to go in depth into it there's a couple examples, and we'll go into that. Um, one of them is digigrade. All right. When we talk about an animal that is digigrade, it means the animal usually walks on its toes. And the best example of that is the dog family and the cat family. Then we're going to talk about plantigrade. If you're a plantigrade mammal, um, examples of that are humans. We're plantigrade raccoons and bears and essentially what that means is you walk on your soles so when I go into those discussions you'll know what that is I'm also going to give you a um, a tool that you can make at home and you'll be able to lay it on the ground and you'll be able to study them uh, as well as your notes because I'll put things on the board as well and we'll uh, we'll go from there. So we'll be jumping. Okay. Right so in. the first gate that we're going to talk about today, because I don't want to inundate you all with with just terms. Very simply, is walk. All animals walk at certain times. Some animals don't prefer to walk, such as in the case of a rabbit, which they're going to bound but they have the ability to walk, they do walk. Uh, it's just rare. So, how do we describe a walk? Well, very simply, walk is symmetrical. All right, there's a mirror image. You'll see what you see on the left side is what you're gonna see on the right side. Uh, each foot falls independently of others. <clears throat> You'll see two parallel rolls 
rows of alternating evenly spaced tracks. The stride, all right, and we'll get into those measurements, is going to be shorter, and the straddle, which is the width of it, is going to be wide. You have direct register, which is common to the dog family. Most times, what you will see is the rear foot on animals will actually overstep a little bit of the front foot. And I'll show that to you. <clears throat> Raccoons have a very distinct way that they walk. And it's another little trick, something to be aware of. The hind print will actually be beside the diagonal foot. So you're actually going to see four tracks. And you'll see front, hind, front, hind, front, hind. I'll show that to you. There's never an airborne phase in a walk. <clears throat> During a crawl or a stalk of an animal, such in, in the case of a uh, coyote or even a cat, <clears throat> you're going to have at least three feet on the ground at one time. And for an amble, which is an actual faster walk, you'll have at least a maximum of two feet on the ground. Uh, it's a very efficient walk. <clears throat> very efficient walk. It's a very efficient gait as far as uh, energy conservation for the animal. Okay, on the board here are the three examples of what I actually just read to you. Uh, all three of these are walks. In the case of the first, this is our center line and our direction of travel. And I'll be using that throughout the series. <clears throat> Anything that goes up is the direction of travel. You see two parallel ro rows of evenly spaced tracks. And for the purpose of this, I'm going to use red as the front track and black will be the rear track or the rear foot. <clears throat> And this is the example of direct register as it moves up. On the second one, which is the most common in most animals, when they're walking, you're going to see the front foot hits and then the rear foot hits slightly in front of the front foot. Here in the case of the raccoon, Again, we have our front feet, but we also have the hind feet as well because, <coughs> excuse me, raccoons have a tendency to waddle and go back and forth like this just because of their body mechanics. All right, <coughs> to aid this a little bit more, I've made some visual aids and I'll teach you how to make these, and then you can use them to practice with yourself. But this is what you're going to see when you're looking at the ground when you see a walk. Again, evenly spaced. <clears throat> Here's our front feet. Here's our hind feet. The front foot hits, followed by the hind foot. And this would be an example of a walk with direct register. Again, the second example. Here's our front feet. They hit the ground the hind feet hit the ground just a little bit past the front foot. This is again where we talk about our measurements and where they come in to being very critical. <clears throat> you don't want to measure a track thinking that the track is from here to here. All right? You have to discern where that end of that hind track is and where the end of the front track is. So you'll see that and it's common. This is the example of the second one where the front foot or I'm sorry where the rear foot hits just in front of the the right or the front foot. The third example that I gave you was the raccoon. We have our front feet hitting the ground and we have those hind feet right next to the front feet because they waddle as they walk. And that would be the third example. 
Okay, so that's the walking gate, and we'll take a look at that now. As you can see, it's typical left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Okay. So where I put this marker and this marker, all right, that is your stride. All right, that is how we would measure the animal's stride. All right, you put this flag. All right, or take your measurement from the rear of the track or the front of the track, it doesn't matter. All right, but you take it and put it at the rear of the track for this example, and then you go up to the same track, the very next track on the same side, and that is your stride. Okay, that's how you measure stride. When we talk about straddle between the tracks, this flag right here is on the very outside of the right track. This flag is on the very outside of the left track. The distance between the two is going to be your straddle. So if we come back here, put that right there. The distance between the two gate is your straddle. From the walking gate, we can actually estimate an animal's size. And it's a measurement right now that I want to give you, along with another bit of information that as we go forward in the series, it's going to be easier for you to understand what you're looking at. Okay? The, <clears throat> to estimate an animal's size, uh, we need to take a measurement in a walking gate, right? That would be the most accurate. <clears throat> so we're going to take a measurement from one of these tracks, it doesn't matter which one that you pick, but you have to go to the next of that same track to get your measurement in your stride, okay? That measurement is actually going to be 1.1 to 1.25 or one and a quarter larger than an actual hip to shoulder measurement on an animal. So for discussion purposes, if this measurement is 22 inches, that's your stride, this is going to be about 20 inches okay that would be your hip to shoulder measurement so you're gonna have a 20 inch animal now you have to estimate once you figure out the type of animal that you have you estimate between the hip and the head you add that measurement in and then from the hip to the end of the rump and that will give you your total length of your animal okay so that's a way to measure or a way to estimate the size of the animal that you're trailing or tracking so the last bit of info that I want to give you today are the rules of speed and your track patterns and your gait is going to change and it's usually governed by the rules of speed um, the rules of speed are, number one, the hind foot will land forward of the front foot of the same side. And you'll see it as you're looking at your tracks. You'll see where the hind foot starts to come further and further and further forward of that front foot on the same side. Number two, as speed increases, your stride also increases so you'll have a longer stride and then finally number three as speed increases your straddle side to side measurement will start to collapse and then decrease for the most part usually all right so that is the beginning of our gates and our trails uh, 
again, it was probably a little bit longer than I wanted it, but sometimes you have to throw that information in there. So uh, we'll go into trots next and we'll continue on. When we get done with that, I will give you measurements. I've given you a couple um, today <clears throat> as, long, as well as the rules of speed. Uh, you should put those in your notebook and we'll, uh, we'll kind of go from there. So this is Brian from Snowwalker Bushcraft. Thank you for your views and your comments. Until the next one, walk the woods.